Hi everyone. In our last video, we saw that how we can create a new smart contract and what is the basic structure of the smart contract. And in this video, we are going to create an example smart contract called exam, where we demonstrate the basic exam functionality in our smart contract. For that, I'm going to go to my source folder here. As you can see, I have already created my exam project. And under the backend, we have source folder. And inside this, we have the lib.address. I'm going to delete everything here so we can start this with a clean page. First, we are going to have a couple of imports. So I'm just going to copy and paste them and I'm going to explain them when we use each of them. Now, this will be our imports. As you can see, we have our candidate. So from the candidate, we are going to use candidate type decode, deserialize and encode. And don't worry, I'm going to explain this as we need them. And we will also have different structures here. As you can see, IC stable structures and memory manager from it, and also the IC stable structures here. And we are also using a couple of functions from the standard library. After pasting them here, I also need to go to my cargo.tml file because, as you can see, it says undeclared import because it doesn't know what we are referring to. And inside this file, under the dependencies, I'm going to define a new dependency IC stable structures and its version going to be 0.5.4 now as you can see we don't have any errors now we can start with our smart contract so before diving into how we can create the basic functionality we need to understand what are the stable structures so we are using a different kind of methodology and the structure in icp to manage the state because we don't want to lose the state whenever we redeploy our contract. Because if we lose this, then every time we need to experiment with the same data again and again, and the severity of this process. For that reason, we need to know how we can manage the state. So we are going to learn it by just doing this example. So first, I'm going to create my struct for the exam. I'm going to call it exam. I know it's not very unique. And first field is going to be out of. So this is going to define how much point the exam is out of. And I'm going to say U8 for this. I believe it's going to be enough. Then we will have the course name. And finally, we will have the curve for the exam. Now this will be our basic structure. But after creating this track, we need to add some macros. I'm going to say drive here. And inside this, I'm going to say candid type and deserialize. Now I get an error here and it says unresolved crate. So I will go to my cargo.tml and yes, it should be structures here. And also let's specify this version. And finally, we should put the Sarde. It should be working fine. And if not, sometimes it doesn't work immediately. So just running a cargo check or cargo build would uh, help. Okay, now we have our struct and our exam struct has three different fields and we put some macros here. And the reason for that is the candidate type will be necessary for our did file here because as you can see, we have different names. For example, for string, we have text. So we don't have one-to-one -one corresponding between the Rust and the candidate. For that reason, we need to define our own types in candidate like we did here with our struct. And for that, we have candidate type. And we also have deserialize here because after we put this data to the memory, we need to deserialize again. And that's why we have our macros. Now we have our struct. But to work with our struct, we need to implement a couple of traits. So we need to implement a couple of traits for our struct to work with our stable memory. For that, we need to implement bounded storable and storable traits. And these traits specify how we can serialize and deserialize data. So you can use any function to serialize and deserialize your data. But I'm going to use candidate since Internet Computer uses this in their example too. But you can use any type. Now, instead of writing this traits, I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to explain how it works because most of the time that is going to be really fixed at what we are doing here. So these are the threads that we will be implementing. 
And as you can see, we have an error here, but don't worry, we are going to talk about it that too. So the first trait that we are implementing is here storable. So we are implementing this trait. So using this trait, we can actually convert our data to bytes and we can convert it back from the bytes to our data that what we are going to work with. So we have two functions and this will convert our data to bytes for the stable memory and this will convert it back. And we are using calf here for this reason and we are encoding our data and we are decoding our data. And as you can see, we don't have any return type here because we are just serializing our data to bytes. But here we have a return type which is self because we are actually getting back our data from the bytes. So that's the difference. Now here with the bound and storable, we are actually saying how big this data can be, what's the maximum size and if it's a dynamic or stable size data. And as you can see, we have a line here saying is fixed size variable here. And we are saying false because we are saying it's a dynamic, it can grow or shrink. But here we have max size and this defines the maximum size. We got an error here because we haven't defined this yet. And I'm going to define them here on top. First, let's say type memory equals virtual memory. and default memory implementation. We haven't used this yet, but we are going to use this in a bit. So I just defined this memory and the whole reason actually for that, it's very tedious to write and read this virtual memory and inside the virtual memory, we have another trait. So instead of this, we are just creating a new type of memory, which is much easier to read. And now we are going to create our constant max value size and it's going to be a u32 and we will say 100. Now as you can see we have our structure. I know it's a little bit much but now let's review what we did because even though it looks a little bit complicated in the beginning after understanding how it works it actually gets much more easier. So what we did is first we created our struct like any other Rust struct. And after that, we add some macros and we added them so that we can define this struct that we did in our Rust code in our candid file so that our front end can know it. And also we added this uh, deserialize so we can deserialize back to this data. So that's the only thing that we added so far. And then we implemented different traits, storable and bounded storable. So with the storable, we are defining how we can convert it to bytes and how we can convert it back from the bytes to the data that we will be using. That was the functional part. And for the limitations, we have bounded storable, which defines if it's a dynamic or fixed and uh, what's the maximum size that we can have. And we said that we will use the max value size here with the hundreds and the is fixed size. We are saying false, meaning that it will be a dynamic so the data can grow and shrink. So that will be the basic uh, structure and ideology of the many, many projects that you will build. So it will get much more easier to construct this. And it will be it for this video. We did uh, quite a bit. And in our next video, we are going to define our thread local and we are going to see how we can actually save this state to the blockchain and how we can get this state back from the blockchain. Thank you very much for listening to me on this video and I will see you on the next one.